In Acts 17.11 we read, These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. So without further ado, let's look into God's Word, the Bible. This is a special Christmas 2018 devotional series, and this is going to be part one. One of the most beautiful statements in the Bible, and especially during this Christmas season as we celebrate the incarnation of the Lord Jesus Christ, is found in what is known as the Virgin Mary's Magnificat, which is the word magnify in Latin, as recorded in Luke 1, 46 to 55. I would like to examine verses 46 to 47, starting today and for the next six days until December 25th. May God bless this portion of Scripture to our hearts that we too, like Mary, can indeed take time to magnify the Lord and rejoice in God our Savior during this most blessed time of year as we contemplate afresh the wonder of the Word was made flesh, according to John 1, 14. I'll read verses 46 to 45, excuse me, 55. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the lowest state of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He hath showed strength with his arm. He hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent empty away. He hath hoped in his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spake to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his seed forever. Today I would like to focus on just the two words, my soul. My is Strong's number 3450, and soul is 5590. They're found together 37 times in the New Testament. And my soul, of course, is referring to Mary's soul, who uttered these blessed words as God moved her to. These verses also contain words spoken in the historical context by the Lord, by Paul, by Peter, and in an example of one of the non-elect. The following passages illustrate how God utilizes this word in connection with each of them. In Matthew 12, 18, we read of God the Father's total approval and acceptance of God the Son as verified by the epithets, my servant and my beloved. Behold, my servant, whom I have chosen, my beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased. I will put my spirit upon him, and he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. In Mark 14, 34, the Lord Jesus expressed these words while in the Garden of Gethsemane. Keep in mind that Gethsemane means wine or oil press highlighting the crushing agony that he was under and having to endure for the second time, the physical, mental, emotional, and psychological trauma that awaited him, although he was not bearing sin. And saith unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death. Tarry ye here and watch. Because Christ was not atoning for the sins of his elect in 33 AD, Acts 2.27 can victoriously proclaim, Because thou wilt not 
leave my soul in hell or the grave, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. In Luke 12, 19 to 20, the non-elect man, rich man, proudly made his boast with no regard for the God who controlled his every breath and heartbeat. And I will say to my soul, soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? The expression, my soul, is also rendered as my life in John 10, 15, and 17. As the Father knoweth me, even so know I the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Therefore doth my Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. The Apostle Paul declares in Acts 20, 22 to 24, this heartfelt admission. And now behold, I go bound in the spirit unto Jerusalem, not knowing the things that shall befall me there, save that the Holy Ghost witnesseth in every city, saying that bonds and afflictions abide me. But none of these things move me, neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Lastly, in Hebrews 10, 36 to 39, God presents this very serious admonition. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Today in this prolonged day of judgment, one soul is the place where God's spirit resides and though and through which he works to will and to do of his good pleasure as we see in the case of Mary or in the example of the rich man, it houses a dead soul that will forever remain under God's wrath. Lord willing, in our next devotional, I will address the object of Mary's veneration. My soul doth magnify the Lord. See amid the winter snow Born for us on earth below See the tender i
listening to eBible Fellowship Scripture and Song program. If you enjoy listening to our programming, we'd like to hear from you. Write to us at eBibleFellowship at Juno.com.